Hey everybody, welcome back to the Land. Please find anybody's gadget with plus 16 wins in a row. Blue baby. Okay, I was just holding my breath because I had ended the previous episode talking about an impending sense of dread. Felt like we were about to random a difficult character, and we weren't wrong. 13 FB, CQX1. Um, well, I mean, we. Blue baby's tough. Look, if you were gonna rank all the characters in Isaac. Oh! <laughs> Why did I step on the button? Why do I ever step on buttons in this game that are non mandatory? Sorry, sorry, that's my bad there. Um, okay, just be cool, brother. <laughs> just be cool. He's done it, and we got a spirit heart out of it. Why did I? Oh, you had to step on the button that time, okay. Um, if you were to rank the characters in the game, you know, who's the easiest character to win with? I actually, to be honest with you, I think, you know, if you're a beginner, it's Azazel. But I think if you're, like, intermediate or higher, you, you know, you got experience in the game, I think it's usually easier to win as, like, Isaac than, than as uh, Azazel. Just because Azazel, you know, obviously you get that damage really early, but uh, as Isaac... You know, you, you have enough base damage to keep yourself steady at the start, and then the D6 gives you a great ability to, uh, uh, to self-select better items and improve the quality of your run in the future. Azazel is also very easy to win with, but it happens. It happens on occasion. That you'll just have a run that doesn't have good range and doesn't get drops uh, for... Oh, is this XL? It is. Um, and doesn't get, you know, good enough, like, damage drops or HP drops, and then, you know, you can find yourself in a tough spot. It's not necessarily common. But it, it happens from time to time. I would I would like to see both of our item rooms here, uh, ideally, if possible. Um, just before we fight the boss, because we do have a deal with the devil. Uh, not even deal with the devil chance, like a deal with the devil certainty. And I gotta tell you, I I'm taking no prisoners, okay? If you want to give me brimstone, if you want to give me mom's knife, if you want to put a meatball down my pant leg, make it look like my you know what fell out, by all means. Sorry. If if you ever hear a reference in a video within the past like year, and you want to know what it is. There's an extraordinarily good chance it's a just a direct quote from the Netflix sketch comedy show. I think you should leave. Um, just you know, there's only like six episodes, and they're 15 minutes long each. It's pretty crazy that you know the average person works 40 hours a week, and then this. This Tim Robinson fellow thinks he can get away with working 90 minutes? A whole year? <laughs> Come on. Anyway, where was I going? Anyway, it's a great show. It might be like my favorite show this year, which is uh, hilarious. Because it feels a little out of character. You know what? I think I can, I think I can get down with the dunce cap. Should I get down with the dunce cap? Probably not. But I'm... Cognizant and aware of the fact that perhaps Zane has been on a little bit of a lighter quotient slash coefficient than usual recently. And I'm hoping maybe we can get some, you know, rubber cement brimstone going on. We're going to be bouncing brimstone shots off the walls here. Let me tell you. So, small rock would be incredible. Uh, a bomb and a spirit heart is also mighty nice. Probably should not stand still while the shots come in, but we'll just chalk that up to me figuring out how to uh, learn how to shoot at a diagonal. You know what I'm thinking now is I kind of wish we had taken Tiny Planet. That's it. We should have waited until we saw both items. But the the number of times that like that's actually relevant in Isaac is very low. I always I, I take issue with this uh, mentality because uh, you know I live a considered life. Outside of Isaac, at least, you know, I, I think about the things that I do before I do them for the most part, and I, um, you know, endeavor to live a life that is uh, cogent and coherent and consistent with my principles and 
blah, blah, blah. But there's always, you know, forgive the oversimplification. It's not hard to live a better life, you know? It's, it's the easiest thing in the world to come up with the steps you need to live a better life. Nobody is confused. It's like, you know, when it comes to weight loss, I don't... Oh, hold on here. This is amazing. When it comes to weight loss, for example, or exercise, I always um, kind of... I don't want to use the C word, but I do kind of cringe when people are like, I don't understand. What's the... It's so confusing. Are eggs good for you? Are they bad for you? Is pizza good for you? Is it great for you? Nobody knows, dude. They're like, well, you know, we should go back, you know, even like 70 years ago. There were people with like, you know, very, very incredible, impressive physiques. You know, the, the, the jury is kind of not been out. What's the opposite? The jury came back in 15 minutes and said, you know, eat less, move more. Um, you know, don't eat stuff that's obviously terrible for you that often. And, you know, if it's not working, then, you know, tweak it after like two weeks. It's, it's not that hard. It's the same thing, you know. Obviously, in hindsight, in this situation, it's very easy to be like... You know, well, you should have taken Tiny Planet along with it. But, you know. It's, it's harder to do in practice, because at, at any given time, there's... You know, potentially dozens of, of little things that are not relevant on the average run, but could be relevant on this run. It's, it's hard to do them all right, you know, at, at exactly the same time. Anyway, this run is still extraordinarily good. And uh, I will probably orbital it up prodigiously for the time being. And uh, if our damage comes up a little bit more, I feel bad, you know, I, I don't want to be seen as complaining here because... 6.78 damage is very good, but our orbital damage combined with our survivability right now is just absurd. I always... Uh, there's got to be a good quote on this somewhere. I don't have a good quote for it specifically. I'm I'm not that quotable. I tend to be overly verbose and concerned with, like, edge cases and straw man. Um, and I, I respect that I'm not... For, for that reason, I tend not to be as quotable. That would be a really good time to get the nickel, but um, I do want champion belt more than a spear at heart, but can kind of work on our donation machine. That's something we haven't been doing that much lately. And I think I'm happy with Satanic Bible over Blue Candle. I understand the benefits of both in this situation, so but we're not going to push it any further. Plus, we don't have any bombs. But, uh, you know, the spirit of the quote is like, it's, it's very easy, I think, to make... The right decisions with somebody else's life. I'm always wary of people who are like, you know, you should, uh, what you should do is this, 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 and this. Yo, by the way, tractor beam. Still would have been better off with ti Tiny Planet, but it's very good. I don't want to be like the guy who's like those who uh, can't do teach, you know, because I don't think that's necessarily fair. But I will say, you know, I, I, when I see posts of people telling me, you know, hey, well, here's what you should do. Here's the optimal way to play Isaac. Unless you're some Victa or Cobalt, who would never do that, by the way, because they have an incredible amount of, well, we have an incredible amount of mutual respect for each other. Um, all we do is complain to each other behind the scenes. <laughs> and nobody's like, hey, in episode 3045, um, what you should have done is this. We're all like, yeah, man, that sucks. Anyway. Um, hey, suffice it to say, I want to see your streak. Why don't you show me your streak if you're going to start hitting me with the backseating. I love being backseated in games where I don't know what I'm doing. In Isaac, though, that's, you got me. In Isaac, though, I'm like, shut up. I rule. I've been through it all, okay? I'm not saying there's not room for improvement. I'm just saying <laughs> I've, I've been through it. We got a spirit art, lost damage, but gained rate of fire. Um, gained luck, lost speed. I think that's actually a pretty good, um, pretty good experimental treatment. 0 0.9 speed, still functional. Like, I, I want to be clear on something. I don't think, like, my job is hard. And I also, I'm going to make a, a, a metaphor here, or a comparison at least. Um, 
And if you're going to be like, well, that's not a metaphor because you're using like or as, which makes it a simile. Okay, show me your English marks from high school. I mean, I won the English award in 12th grade for having the highest mark in my high school in English. So surely you must have had the highest mark in the freaking country if you're going to be backseating my English in a YouTube comment. See, this is where we're, we're bringing a real masculine energy into this run. I'm hoping it's going to serve us well. Testosterone levels off the chart right now. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, I forgot my train of thought. Okay. Boomer levels off the chart now. No, but like, I think, you know, there's, there's a very famous film producer who just uh, passed away. His name was Robert Evans. I'm familiar with some of his movies, like Chinatown, for example. Widely considered one of the best movies of all time. And absolutely nobody problematic worked on that movie at all. But um, bum -ch. Either way, though, um, his name is Robert Evans, um, and it, most people around my age, my, myself included, are predominantly familiar with him via Patton Oswalt stand-up comedy bit from his 2004 album that I don't remember the name of. It might be Stop Crying, You Effing Baby. Can't remember. Regardless, there are werewolves and lollipops. That sounds right. Either way. The last tweet that Robert Evans sent out in his entire life was in response to an article, like, this summer about him leaving Paramount Pictures, the company that he had worked for for, you know, 50 years. Because um, he, he was old. And, you know, it, it's also possible there were creative differences and Paramount wanted him out, which is fair. You know, he's like he was like 86. <laughs> Maybe it's time for some fresh, you know, faces. But anyway... Somebody replied and was like, it's about time, blah, 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 blah. Um, and Robert Evans on Twitter replied to them and said, I bet I've accomplished more in the past year than you've done in your entire miserable life. And I love it. <laughs> Not because that's the attitude that I take with my community. Not at all. You know, it, I, uh, I, I genuinely do. I respect the backseating and I welcome it in most situations. A lot of streamers don't. I'm quite the opposite. I recognize that were it not for backseating, a lot of games would take me 20 times longer to reach some level of proficiency in. Proficiency in. Sorry, backseaters. Um, but there are the occasional times where I get tweeted like essays by people and then I look at their tweets and they're just miserable all the time. And I, there's a little temptation to clap back. And that's why I admire, um, you know, professional athletes. Because they are just inundated on Twitter, Instagram, uh, by the tweets of, of morons who have no idea what they're doing and did not even sniff at, at reaching the level that these guys are at in their sport. And they have to have the restraint, because if even a, they... In one moment of weakness, if, you know, like, I'm trying to, th if Connor McDavid saw a tweet that was like, well, you're really slumping lately, Connor, and then uh, went like, oh yeah, well, how about this tweet from six months ago about you eating a craft single, you know, naked in your bathtub, you know, that would be bad press for him. And I think it's not the complete picture. Why not? Oh, no, wait, eh, why not? To be like, well, yeah, but it's easy if you have, like, millions of dollars and blah, 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 blah. You know, it probably does make it easier. I'll admit. Because, you know, you got some real skin in the game. And also, you should be more content with yourself when you got, you know, money irons out some problems in your life. And, and in your personality, I'm sure. But, um, at the same time, you know, it's probably getting... Connor McDavid, not so much because he's crushing it. But, you know, like, Louis Erickson... Look, he hasn't been a, a superstar for the Canucks, and he's, he's on an expensive contract. I'm sure he gets tweeted garbage, like, all the time. Or, he, you know, people are talking smack about him all the time in public. I think he should clap back. Just once. I think I, it would be fantastic. And then it, it happens every time. I've seen it happen with content creators as well. You know, they clap back. Usually people are very supportive of the clapback. And I think that that rules. You know, it, the number of times someone has tweeted a content creator some garbage, and the content creator has been like, hey man, this isn't cool. And then by the time you see the thread, the original person is like muted, locked, or delete, protected their Twitter account. I'm like, yeah, get him. Get him, Dr. Lupo. <laughs>
Hold on. Okay, this is an important moment, especially knowing that it's the uh, the fallen here, and we have a per throw. There's some very solid stuff happening in there. We don't really need the nail because we have a satanic Bible. I will take this. Uh, I don't think we need it either, but it's kind of fun. Where are we at? This is depths one, presumably. Yeah. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep moving. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't get hit. How? Let me out. Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't get hit there. That's that's incredible. We deserve to, probably. I mean, it's a touchy room. All that work just to get blown up by a bomb anyway. Why didn't you just teleport out in the first place, you... Anyway. This isn't another social media episode. I'm not really complaining about social media either. I was actually, I was tweeting with the developer today. Um, and he was like, so many people complain about how Twitter is making them miserable. And, you know, it's like they don't realize... If you see tweets you don't like, you can just, like, mute the person that made it. You, I mean, you could obviously log off as well and blah, blah, blah. And I was, you know, talking with them. And I was like, I, dude, I agree a thousand percent. Like, earlier this year, I unfollowed, like, 700 people. And I started muting people who, you know, whose names I recognized for bad reasons. For, for sending me, you know, stuff that was either... Um, inappropriate i don't mean inappropriate like they sent me like you know some not safe for work like homemade simpson stuff or something i mean just like they would make tweets that are like li tweets like i knew who they were and like we had rapport but th that like if malv tweeted me i would be like i'm friends with malv so this joke that he's making about you know punching me in the face it's just a joke but you, you know, random Twitter user, I understand you maybe watched a lot of my content. We might have even had a back and forth on Twitter a little bit. But when you make a joke about punching me in the face, it looks a lot like a stranger threatening to assault me. So you you have to accept, you know, you gotta... It's it's the number one rule of comedy. You gotta know your audience, right? And, and Twitter has been way better for me now. The caveat there is you do also still have to deal with the people who... If you choose to actively not make yourself miserable on that site, they think that you're not doing your civic duty. Like, by being angry all the time, that's the only way to stay active and engaged in improving society without actually doing anything. Yeah, I'm being the boomer who's railing on slacktivism a little bit. I don't like to be the guy. Here's the thing. I think you can be a slacktivist, and that's fine. Twitter is a site where you can, you can, not only can, but should post about the stuff that you want to post about. If you see some BS going on every single day and you want to post about it, that's cool. All I'm asking you to do is not be like, you know, upset if I choose not to follow you or if I mute you. I'm not going to block you because then you would know that I did it and, uh... That's way worse, because I want to stay out of that kind of confrontation. But, you know, I think you're entitled to tweet whatever you want. I just get annoyed when, you know, I'm like, eh, you don't really want to see this, so, you know, I've uh, muted this thread. And people go, oh, it must be, it would, it would a privilege to disengage with discourse that for some people is, I mean, I know, okay? There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> I think, like, you know, I have, I have a half-finished philosophy in my head about how I feel about anger. You know, I I think anger can be a, a motivator to do positive stuff. If you see something happening in society and it makes you incensed, um, and, and your chosen way to deal with that is to do something about it, I want to be clear about do something about it. I, I'm not sending a coded message of like, take matters into your own hands. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, you know, like, volunteer. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, 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 I say this about shame, too. I think shame can be a great motivator. Now, I'm not saying, you know, like, people should mercilessly make fun of other people. I think that's a distortion of the reality I'm going for. But, you know, before I worked, what was my main reason for wanting to get in shape? I was a little ashamed. I look at my 
midsection, and, you know, I was like, look, you don't need to be yoked, but it's kind of embarrassing that I have, you know, a lot of advantages in life that would, you know, other people use as excuses for not being able to work out, and I'm not taking advantage of it, you know? I have, you know, easily accessible gym facilities, I'm young, healthy, able-bodied, I, you know, live in a city that's healthy, easy access to proper nutrition, blah, blah, blah. Why am I fat? That, that shame has been a powerful motivator um, for me on, on my path to getting at least a little bit healthier. But I feel like for a lot of people that anger, um, really a shame as well, um, can kind of become like paralytic. Think instead of getting angry and then being like, this is an injustice that I can work to correct. Um, they get angry and then it kind of like stops them from doing anything that day. And then, you know, they log on the next day and they see something else that they get angry about and they just end up in this cycle as like destructive. Now I'm talking not from a position of experience here. So I, I might be saying some ignorant stuff. It's gonna happen now and then. I, I have an openness to learn. Whether you agree or disagree with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts. But, um, you know, I think that sometimes that anger can, can paralyze you in, the, in action. And it's even more seductive because you feel like, you know, when you see that stuff that makes you angry, you're like actively engaged. And if you were to disengage with it, you're not doing, you know, your part from a societal standpoint. Like if you're not paying attention, then you're, you're betraying you know, the, the things that you want out of a society. Also, we live in a society. Sorry, there have been 45 seconds since I made a joke, and that makes me very uncomfortable. <laughs> in the content creator landscape, if you don't want your analytics to suffer, we recommend a ratio of uh, one joke per one minute. It really helps to get people engaged in your content. It makes it very shareable, very clickable, very sticky, and good for advertisers. But, you know, I have a complicated relationship with it. I would never tell anybody to stop posting political stuff, for example, on Twitter. But I would mute them. <laughs> I think if, if, if that's the way you want to use your feed and that's the way you want to interface with the site, I'm not saying I'm doing it any better. I'm just, I'm tailoring it to my own experience. I also think that, like, to some extent, you know... You ever hear the expression, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail? I think we do want this. I think it's, it's a deceptively great expression. You know, I, I think... if I, I see this happening all the time online. Um, and, it, you know, it's happened to me when I was younger as well. Uh, you know, like when I was a teenager. Uh, if you spend, like, all of your time or a lot of your time online... Uh, watching content that is like in one specific mode uh, like it has one specific philosophy associated with it I feel like literally everything you see becomes interpreted through that lens and it's very exhausting for people that are not in the same sort of like headspace that you're in Trying to think of it. There's got to be a, a more elegant and uh, still non-controversial way for me to describe what I'm thinking. But you ever like look at somebody's tweets and every single tweet is about politics despite the fact that, you know, they don't work in politics? I think that is okay. But sometimes you're like, you know, hey, there's some, there's been some very bad political news today. And you're like, that's very appropriate for you to tweet about politics. Sometimes they're like, my... Popeyes has run out of chicken sandwiches, and this is an example of why capitalism, you know, is unethical. And I'm like, dude, I'm just, you know, like, I think that one might fall more into the sandwich specific sphere and might not have as much overlap with economic philosophy. People might take issue with that, <laughs> but... Like, I'm trying to think of the good way to describe Like, sometimes in Vancouver, you know, like, you'll see tweets from our transit authority that are like, you know, hey, the buses are late today because, you know, there's a, a strike on Burrard Street or something like that. And then, well, actually, because it deals with a strike, that's a little bit more. It's a stickier situation. 
Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just saying, on social media, I think you have a responsibility to curate your feed as you see fit. It doesn't mean you're any less, uh, you know, engaged with society. I think that there's a there's a seductive element to uh, to tweeting in particular that makes you think you're doing your part when you're not actually like really. I mean, I'm not. You're not doing nothing because you are raising awareness, but you're not accomplishing as much as you could if you if you internalize that anger into a little nugget of rage and then you put that into your into your engine and use it as a fuel to send you forward to do the things you want to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not saying don't tweet about politics stuff. I'm not being shut up and dribble. I'm saying, you know, be angry, but then like, you know, do something productive about it. I think, I don't think that's controversial. I might be wrong, though. What I'm not wrong about is that this is a great episode. And not in terms of commentary. It's an absolute garbage fire. However, um, we, uh, I, I think I'm getting myself into trouble because the runs are so good. I'm getting myself into some, some sensitive topics. What I should be doing instead, yo, host hat, did me a real solid there, is actively um, issuing incredibly high quality items and then just starting to pick up decent quality items instead. It turns out the Isaac Sweet Spot is a run that's easy enough that a loss is not comprehensible, but uh, difficult enough that you still have to pay attention and as a result don't get yourself embroiled in these kind of disputes. But either way, dude, a very solid Blue Baby run in the books for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!